Hi, I'm Susan from Sunrise Quilt Studio, and today I wanted to show you some quilt blocks and a couple of quilt tops that I purchased this past weekend while I was out traveling. My family and I had been on vacation, and on the way home, we stopped at several antique shops and flea markets on the way home, and uh, I came across this set of bow tie blocks, and there were 58 in this set, and they were labeled as 1940s bow tie blocks. Now I'm not certain that that dating is correct. It could very well be, um, but I'm not real knowledgeable on 40s fabrics. And some of them, I'm, I question the age of them. But uh, I thought they were interesting. I really like this pink and the green combination here. And you'll notice that um, this piece, this patch here has been seamed like a lot of vintage tops are and vintage blocks that you will find they will be pieced like this and these are all machine stitched and this one happens to be stitched with some bright pink thread so there's a variety of fabrics here we've got some um, some kind of a shirting stripe and uh, this confetti pattern here I have another one um, this orange is the same as this pink, just a different colorway. And then we have the graphic here with the flowers and hearts and leaves on it. And then there's another pink one with a different green back. And this one is stitched in blue thread. So you never know what you're going to get. And here's a red, white, and blue block. This is just a solid, this feels um, almost like denim, but it would have been a very thin denim. I'm not sure what fabric that is. And here's one little calico, a little blue calico here. Another block like this. And this one is um, not stitched the best. You notice this patch here is... It wasn't cut perfectly. And this piece here is seamed. The center of the bow tie. Another green and pink. There's a red one with some cream color and tan and blue. A solid orange with green. And you'll notice these blocks are not squared up. You can see here. They aren't squared up, so I'll have to figure out the average size of these blocks and um, get them all squared up. I'm going to have to press them first because they're all folded. A lot of them are folded anyway in places. And this one here has a bright red and a white fabric, and this one has a little nip in it. So I'll have to do something about that. And let's find something a little bit different. Another calico. And this one um, has a shiny thread running through it. And this is like a chambray here. And a solid blue with another stripe. And this one, a little graphic print. So um, a lot of them are very similar. They're the same. Um, there's another one with like a piece of shirting, I believe. And this, this piece has got some staining on it. It's kind of dirty, so that'll have to be cleaned. And I will probably go ahead and put these together in a top before I do any cleaning. Um, soaking... Uh, tops or blocks before they're quilted can be risky because they can fray. So you have to be very careful with that. So I haven't decided yet what I'm going to do. And this will be a project that it's going to take me a while to get to. I've got still have lots of things to do. Um, I haven't been quilting uh, mostly because I was on vacation last week and this week I've been having trouble with my back so I haven't been at the quilting machine. It's um, I think I'm getting better, but it's very slow this time around, so um, 
I'm hoping that maybe I can get to some quilting this weekend. And here's another one with blues in this cute little blue print here. And some more calico type print here. And some solids. And I think that's about it as far as variety. I think the rest of these are pretty similar to what we've seen before. Except perhaps this one here. This blue is different. So I don't know what vintage these are. I am going to um, do some research and maybe consult with some quilting friends who um, study a lot of vintage quilts and fabrics and see what they think. It's usually where I go to if I can't figure it out myself. Next I want to show you also was I have two quilt tops and they're the same pattern but they are different sizes. Now this is um, this pattern is um, improved, called an improved nine patch. Uh, you can also see it as a nine patch variation. Um, I think there's a couple of different names for this one but uh, I have not seen these tops in the market be place before, um, and I haunt uh, flea markets and antique shops probably about once a month. My husband and I both like to go out and uh, look in quilt shops and our quilt shops, flea markets and antique shops. He, of course, he looks for different things, but he does help me if he comes across something while he's hunting for his. Um, pieces and he sees something and he'll he'll let me know what he's found and I'll go look at it. But this was in a antique shop and it was hanging. They had it on um, some racks where they had completed quilts hanging and they had two tops. And I bought both of the tops and they were the same pattern. And looking at these um, I'm guessing 1940s on this one also, though there are some blocks in here with fabrics that I think are probably 1940s, like these blues in this block here, because you can see the shadow around the pattern here, and it feels like a feed sack fabric. So I'm guessing 1930s on that. But there are some conversation prints like here. I can't tell exactly what they are, but it looks like there's some clouds and there's a lighthouse here. Um, this is probably a, I'm guessing a horse with a rider, but this one almost looks, um, with the hat on the man, this also looks more oriental to me. So I don't know if it's from the same piece of fabric or not. And we have some bold yellows and blacks. And then down here, um, we have some paisleys. And there's just a lot of different fabrics from what I have seen before. And these fabrics here, are some little graphics, and this is a more um, abstract design in here. And some checks. And polka dots. Right there. So lots of different patterns in this one. This one has also feed sacks here. And some in this one also. The pinks are feed sacks here. So I have been spending most of my day today. I was off work today and um, spent most of my day um, sketching quilting designs for this quilt top. Now this top is... Um, this is hand pieced and they did a really good job and it was really hanging straight it wasn't puckering anywhere, it wasn't sagging so it's possible they didn't have it hanging very long um, otherwise it probably would have started um, sagging in places so but then here, see here's um, some machine stitching also so this is a combination of machine and hand piecing and then here on this lozenge piece. This one is pieced in two different places to make enough fabric 
to complete this section. And the other one is the same pattern, but you can see this is a much larger block. Now the only time I have seen this pattern before is a quilt that my grandmother had made and I inherited the top and the backing fabric also she had with it and um, I put put it together and quilted it and uh, I did it pretty traditionally. I just did outline stitch and everything even in the, the uh, oval pieces um, and I think it turned out okay. But I'm going to do something a little bit different for these, I think. And this top is also hand-pieced. And this one, these light purples are feed sacks. But then some of these, uh, I think, are probably 40s fabrics because they're darker, like this blue here. And they can be even newer. I'm not just not sure. And um, one thing I suggest, if you buy vintage tops, to document them, where you purchased them, how much you paid for them. Um, if you got an, an appraisal on them, you know, attach your appraisal to that. And um, what you've done to them, like what I will put on my records is where I purchased them, how much they cost, what I, how old I think they are. Um, and then I'll put down that I machine quilted them myself and uh, that that and um, bound them myself and that way you've got the whole record and if I know any background on the quilt top uh, especially like the ones I've inherited from my grandmother and any that friends have given to me as much information as I can get on them I will add to that and I just keep it in a in a Word document in my computer and then I print them out and then I file them also in a file cabinet so I have a paper copy as well as the digital copy and I put a photograph of the quilt in there so that way if in the future um, if my when my children inherit these they'll have a, a complete record of these tops and they can do what they want to with them at that point they can uh, have them reappraised have, and sell them if they want to. They can use them, whatever they want. Um, and I've mentioned before that I finished these tops because I don't think the makers of these tops intended for them to just stay in storage for eternity. They were making these to be used and something happened. They either passed away or became ill and were unable to finish them and their families didn't want to do anything with them and so they wind up in flea markets and in antique shops and in garage sales and that kind of thing and so I want to finish them to kind of complete the job that they started and if that just rubs against the grain for you then you know don't don't finish them just keep them the way they are and they're really good display pieces for your home I quilt them in all of the beds in our home have handmade quilts on them. Ones that I've either made from the beginning myself or they'll be a top like this that I purchased and then uh, completed or like my grandmother's quilt tops I have also on beds. So these quilts will get used at some point. Uh, I rotate them so that they don't get too worn and um, I just enjoy working with them because piecing is not my favorite part of the quilting process. The machine quilting is my favorite part so I would rather have a top that I can purchase within my budget and then finish the quilting part of it rather than start from scratch. So that's just my story. So um, that's all I had for today. I uh, hope you enjoyed this and if so please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe and thanks for watching.